Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear colleagues and dear friends, dear Mrs. Um, Jana, I now forgot your last name, so, but I'm very happy that you are here, and of course, dear Petro and the team of uh, the Euro Guidance, and thank you so much for inviting me and letting me share our experiences with you. Um, I apologize for not speaking Czech, and uh, so I hope uh, you can follow the presentation and otherwise we have um, a discussion for, for um, time for questions and discussion. So, uh, I would like to start with two important messages, which I think are sort of the overall thing. And the one says, good guidance is expensive, Bad guidance costs a fortune, which means if you don't invest in good guidance, you will have afterwards many costs in unemployment, in healthcare, in criminal uh, uh, behavior, and whatsoever. So uh, here, um, it is really good to invest in good guidance. And the second one is quality is a journey and not a destination, meaning it's a continuous process of always um, sort of uh, uh, keeping <laughs> uh, the ball. No, how are we have the championship? All oh, the Germans uh, are out now. <laughs> okay, so it is a really continuous process where you always have to keep on uh, and invest in quality and quality development in your. Uh, um, in your um, um, institution or even as a practitioner for yourself. So this is, I think, uh, um, um, two messages which, uh, of course, you know, a little bit cover the whole thing. But now to go into the details, this is what the agenda for uh, my speech would be. I'll just give you a brief portrait of the National Guidance Forum in Germany. Um, I will give you a little overview about the institutional framework of career guidance in Germany. And um, I will have some reflections on the policy context uh, and the role of actors and stakeholders. And uh, then this is sort of the heart piece of my presentation to um, tell you something about this, how we call it the open process of coordination in order to develop and implement uh, uh, commonly agreed uh, uh, quality standards in Germany. And uh, finally, how to implement them, which is a, a separate story. What are the stumbling blocks and success factors and what are the lessons we learned? So this would be the overall agenda. And um, I start with a um, short portrait, brief portrait on, of the National Guidance Forum. We are something like a national umbrella organization. We were founded in 2006. And uh, what we have, um, it's a non-profit organization and uh, we live uh, from our uh, membership contributions from the members and maybe some donations. And if we have uh, government funded projects or like the Erasmus project, uh, this would be the uh, resources uh, we have, which are not very much, I tell you, it's uh, hard to struggle and uh, get money uh, uh, for this uh, uh, work. Um, we have European and international roots. I don't uh, comment on this too much, but uh, maybe um, some of you have in mind the OECD studies in 2001 following years and together with the European Commission and also um, the um, uh, European resolution on career guidance from 2004 and 2008, which sort of promoted and fostered uh, the uh, um, establishment of a guidance forum in Germany. <clears throat> and something which is very important, uh, and we are maybe a little bit proud of it, is that our National Guidance Forum is a bottom-up approach, meaning people who are interested, institutions who are interested, stakeholders, um, providers, uh, experts, uh, researchers, they said we start, we do, we, we, we establish such a forum. And we had, uh, luckily, 
uh, in the beginning the um, support of the uh, Federal uh, Ministry of Education. Um, not really with funding, funding only in uh, terms of project funding, but not funding the institution as such, which always, just to uh, give a little example, uh, um, is the difficulty for us to really uh, maintain something like a normal office and office clerks and things like this, you know. So uh, I'm not only the chair and uh, the president of this forum, sometimes I'm the secretary of this forum, just as well, <laughs> the administrative um, people. So um, what are our mission and our goals? Um, <coughs> We, uh, as was said also in the in the uh, uh, European resolutions, uh, we wanted to establish a coordinating mechanism where all the involved people, the actors and stakeholders for career guidance work together. We have a very heterogeneous guidance landscape in Germany after the um, monopoly of the public employment service was abolished in 1998. And so it's a variety and uh, not very overseeable and uh, not very clear and transparent to users, but also to policymakers, to, to practitioners, uh, this quite complicated and very heterogeneous uh, guidance system. <clears throat> uh, we do want to raise the acknowledgement of career guidance in the public, saying that public is both a high private and also a high public good and to, uh, to achieve individual as well as societal goals. Um, we wanted to bring up this issue of career guidance a little bit higher up in the political agenda because policymakers really do not care much about career guidance. Their career, they care about education, they care about employment, and uh, they care at the moment about digitalization and things like this. But looking at the role career guidance has to play in all these areas of policy is something we really want to promote and to bring up on the political agenda. <clears throat> For the professional community, we also wanted to establish something uh, like a uh, a uh, forum, a platform for knowledge sharing, for discussion, for networking, to bring together the um, uh, um, professional community, which was very separate so far. Everybody did his or her own business, and there was not much connection and networking between them. And of course, we want to strengthen the quality and professionalism of career guidance. Uh, the career guidance is not a very highly professionalized uh, uh, field of action in Germany, actually, other than, for instance, the psychologists or the, the uh, uh, counseling, uh, the coaching. They all have their professional associations and are quite highly professionalized, but career guidance as such is not. And so they want to raise this and strengthen this. Uh, we want to endorse and initiate guidance research. And um, last but not least, and this is why I'm here also, is to um, <coughs> foster and to intensify the European collaboration and networking. So these are the main mission and goals we have. Um, now, um, we have 50 members, you may think this is not very much, uh, about one third is individual persons like experts and uh, researchers and uh, um, we don't have practitioners in our, in our as such, we are only have uh, representatives, you know, and uh, <clears throat> the other th two third are institutional members and uh, they are listed here, I don't have to repeat everything, uh, but we tried to get the most most important um, stakeholders and uh, groups in society who have an asset in uh, career guidance. And which is very important, we have an advisory board, which is sort of our policy link, which means we have um, an advisory board. And there we asked representatives from ministries, from the, uh, the social partners, from the ministries, also from the federal level and from the regional level. We have these 16 uh, regional governments and regions with their um, 
uh, a government. And so we have from both levels, we have uh, representatives of ministries and uh, also from the municipalities, we have representatives from them. And also we have two uh, researchers, scientists in there. And this is our advisory board. And this is something where we think on the one hand, they should a little bit communicate to us what is on the political ag agenda just now where we could, you know, get into. And the other thing is that uh, the things we produce and we discuss could sort of be transferred to the policy uh, area. To be honest, this doesn't always really work. Yeah, We uh, had maybe some illusions and uh, anyhow, we still try to, and I mean, uh, and maybe it's just because of, of, of uh, um, uh, um, difficulties in finding, finding a date to meet that it takes time and time and time un until we really have a meeting of this advisory board. So um, this is a, a tough thing, a hard thing, but anyway, I think it is necessary to have this policy link. What we don't have is that uh, the ministry sort of took over and said, well, now we, it's fine you have a forum, but now we sort of take over the, the steering and the, the leadership. You know, this is not the case. Um, the Ministry of Education, they funded some projects, but they were not members. The Ministry of um, Labor and Social Affairs, they started uh, uh, in, at the beginning to be a supportive member. We have two types of memberships. We have the regular membership and we have the uh, supportive membership, which means they have the same rights and things and they are members as everybody can can participate in any activities but if there are votes for the board they have no votes you know so this is the only difference and this is for <clears throat> policy um, uh, institutions sometimes uh, a good choice to say well we support this uh, um, uh, institution or this forum but we are not a total full member so we are not identified with everything this forum does or when we make a communication or a press release you know they don't have to sort of agree with everything, which makes it easier. But in total, they say, well, we think it's a good thing, and so we support it. So this is uh, the difference between the supportive member, and especially for political institutions, uh, this is uh, a good thing. Now, I'll choose me. It's very warm here. Okay, <clears throat> so what are our activities and projects? Very shortly, we worked from 2007 to 2015 until the end in the European Lifelong Guidance Policy Network. I think you all know this, the ELGPN. And uh, within uh, this network, we especially were involved and engaged in the development of the quality assurance and evidence-based framework. One thing which has high importance, especially for policymakers, to see, well, if we invest in career guidance, what do we get back? Or does it make a difference? What, are the, what is the impact? What are the outcomes of career guidance? And so we uh, worked on that on this um, QAE. We are <coughs> currently engaged in the project that Alisa where is she? Yeah. Well, Alisa, which Alisa just uh, 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 um, presented, so I'm not commenting more on that. Uh, one of our really main big projects is this open process of coordination to develop the BQ concept for quality development in career guidance and counseling. BQ is the name in German, it says Beratungsqualität. BQ, so it's quality and guidance. <clears throat> so that's how we call our concept. Uh, we do want to make policy advice and consulting for various government initiatives if if they let us, you know, if uh, we have a chance to get into. And to give you an example of uh, how we try to do this. <clears throat> In Germany, we had uh, last year, we had elections for the parliament and uh, the government. And uh, in advance to this, we sent to, um, <clears throat> to the... Um, uh, to to um, uh, 
uh, how do you go to, to the deputies in the parliament uh, from the different parties, we sent something we called, oh, now that's difficult, um, well, touchstones, I think you can say, uh, to ask them what are your plans in the next legislative period uh, you want to do for career guidance? And what do you think about such and such and such, you know, the professionalization, the quality, uh, the um, uh, payment for career guidance practitioners and their precarious, sometimes precarious employment situation? Uh, what do you do to really uh, sort of uh, um, implement uh, the uh, recommendations of the European resolutions from 2004 and 8. So this kind of questions we asked them, and really we got answers, <laughs> which was nice. <clears throat> Mostly very vague, you know, actually. So, uh, but you know, it was a step to you know get into contact with them. And then now, after it took a long time in Germany this time, uh, after we had a coalition treaty, a coalition contract, and a government finally, um, we again approached those people or uh, the fractions in the in the parliament and said, "Now, so what? <laughs> now you are in parliament. Now you are there. So what were you going to do? And can we get into contact and into into uh, um, uh, communication?" And obviously, we had uh, only in June we had three appointments with three uh, uh, deputies, and we have another and another uh, 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 three appointments uh, after the summer break. So this is the way how to contact. This is what well, I think we have to close it again. Well, I hope Park is still still alive. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is a kind of uh, sort of uh, policy consulting, policy interventions we want uh, to do. And um, <clears throat> then, of course, uh, we organize once or twice a year either national uh, or sometimes European uh, conferences on career guidance on specific topics, uh, topics we just had in uh, February. We had a very good uh, and highly frequented uh, uh, um, um, uh, conference on ethics in guidance and um, we now have uh, one on uh, adult education uh, guidance and counseling so we organize things like this um, okay now uh, switching to uh, the institutional and political framework of career guidance in Germany now this is complicated it just sort of uh, um, is that the right Yeah. Okay. So this is like the life cycle. You know, we go from school to first vocational education or higher education. Do go? Do you go to employment, vocational reorientation, employment, unemployment, and this is the adult education and further education um, sort of area. So this kind of life cycle, and in each of those, you have this specific uh, uh, responsibilities, who is doing it and who is responsible for it. So I'm not going to comment on all these, uh, but um, you see it's uh, sometimes the same, but also different, and it's always uh, a different uh, institution which has the head on <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, which finances the things. Um, so, um, the most important player still is the Federal Employment Service in Germany, the Federal Employment Agency. Uh, they um, have by law the uh, um, um, uh, responsibility to provide <coughs> career guidance, but also other like the regional governments, uh, like municipalities and also chambers of commerce and crafts have some legal responsibilities in providing career guidance. <coughs> the federal government actually does not have any responsibilities. They can sort of make uh, model projects, something like this. They can fund research or the development of, of uh, uh, quality standards like they did with us, but they don't really have a legal right to, to establish uh, things. This is the uh, um, uh, responsibility of the regional governments. And uh, the same is the providers. There are very many providers who, in you know, sort of parallel 
you know, offer their services in schools, in higher education institutions. Uh, uh, it's, it's only for the unemployed in the labor market where the federal employment uh, agency is the uh, most important uh, provider. So we can uh, maybe um, go into that later if you have questions to it. I just want to go a little bit further. Also, the target groups, I think this is nothing new for you. It's usually the target groups. <coughs> uh, any one of us <coughs> uh, and, and the provider institutions have and uh, the funding <coughs> is uh, either by taxes, which is uh, for the municipalities and the uh, uh, regional governments. On the federal level, the public employment service is uh, funded by contributions from employers and employees. There's no tax money. You know, so this is important. So the employers and uh, um, the trade unions, uh, they have um, sort of the right to decide on things and on the um, uh, funding. <clears throat> and of course, we have a mix of private and public funding and also private funding by clients. This is mostly the case when they, um, when they um, <clears throat> uh, approach uh, private private or self-employed uh, uh, counselors uh, who work on their own commercial basis. <clears throat> Important, we have no legislation and no binding quality standards for career guidance, which applies to all uh, sectors in career guidance. So there is none and nothing, you know. Uh, there are, is of course, a variety of sector-specific or provider-specific quality standards or guidelines. So each of them has their own, but there is no network, no connection, and no. So, and this is one of our main motives to say we do. If we have such a heterogeneous uh, landscape, then what we really need uh, would be common standards. You know, to provide uh, uh, the um, people and the users with a <clears throat> sort of equally qualified uh, service. Um, and the same holds true for the uh, for the uh, professional development and the uh, uh, um, <clears throat> qualification of the um, uh, uh, practitioners. There is no legislation and no entrance requirements. Uh, anyone can say I'm a guidance counselor. <clears throat> Okay, so what about quality? What is qualities? And so I think uh, it is a little bit a different graph, but it says the same as Alisa, I think, had in the mind map <laughs> before, is that uh, it is not nothing which is objectively or normally set as this is quality. So, but it is a, uh, um, a result of a negotiation process between the different uh, stakeholders and the parties involved in the uh, career guidance. And this is, of course, in the first place, the citizens, the clients, the users, they have expectations, they have uh, um, uh, uh, an idea of what a good quality service is or should be, what they expect. Uh, we have the service providers <clears throat> who also have their certain expectations, but who also have to sort of realize the purpose of their organization. They have to make efficient use of their resources. So there are other types of expectations coming, which they think uh, they uh, have to, they expect from good guidance. And of course, so they have to maintain their market position, you know. Um, so the expectations are different from those of the clients. The professionals and practitioners, they have sort of the professional or maybe scientifically founded uh, um, um, expectation of what uh, quality is. Um, they have ethical standards and uh, they think of achieving also societal goals. And finally, the society and policymakers, they have in mind that guidance is a, um, uh, <clears throat> an instrument to, to reach uh, societal and policy goals, uh, but also they have to look whether they get a good return of invest and that really the impact of guidance uh, and uh, the uh, investment is good invested. So this is then together what the quality is. <clears throat> and uh, this for us, the consequence for our project was be that we uh, really have to invite policymakers, all stakeholders on the national and the local uh, level 
uh, to to carry out our project in in uh, developing career guidance quality standards. And um, so we started in 2009 with some financial su support from the Federal Ministry of Education. And also in parallel, we worked in the ELGPN, and this was sort of a synergy effect. <clears throat> uh, the uh, uh, project lasted almost five years, which is uh, quite a time. And um, the project partners were the National Guidance Forum, and the University of uh, Heidelberg. Um, and then we had all the different rounds of experts, stakeholders, uh, which we involved, who, who we involved. We had two continuously working expert groups who developed the quality standards and the competence profile. Um, we had two larger expert conferences. And we had one large national conference in 2012. Uh, we had four roundtables with policymakers. Um, we had nine regional conferences with provider institutions, practitioners, and uh, uh, even also policymakers. So this is, um, well, a very um, intensive process of uh, getting all the uh, stakeholders and parties participating in the process. Uh, and uh, now uh, the project funding ended in 2014. And from uh, 2015 ongoing, we, the National Guidance Forum, is in the process of implementing this concept, making it known, disseminating it, and also offering workshops and uh, uh, quality uh, framework and things in order to, to, to disseminate it and make it, uh, establish it in Germany as a national guidance uh, uh, quality framework. And we do this without any public funding. Because before and we had public funding, now we have to do it on our own, which means we have to take at least something like market prices. And this, of course, is one of the um, uh, not success factors, because uh, a lot of the institutions and the guidance providers, even the smaller ones, couldn't invest that much money, which we would have to take in order to cover our costs. So uh, this really is, and I'm very honest, um, a slow and uh, <clears throat> quite difficult process, but we are ongoing, we are doing things like this. <clears throat> so, the general goals and objectives of the project, and this is something which uh, would be um, um, also, um, when I got right what you said, Alisa, is in the first place we started uh, developing a common understanding among the different groups and stakeholders of career guidance as such, and also developing a common understanding of quality. So this was sort of the beginning of what we started with. And then we wanted, of course, we, we developed a catalog of commonly agreed quality standards. These are 19 quality standards, and they all, and I can go into more detail if you want in the, uh, later on, um, and these are underpinned. Always we have sort of a, like a headline. This is a quality standard, and uh, then we um, underpin those with criteria and with elements and with indicators on how you could see that this uh, uh, quality standard is met and maybe how you can measure it. So this is every, any one of those standards is underpinned. And the same is with the competence profile. We have a competence profile of 17 competencies and they are also underpinned with indicators and uh, yeah, knowledge indicators and things like this. <clears throat> Um, we have developed a quality development framework, we call it QER, uh, Qualitätsentwicklungsrahmen, um, which is a, a six-phase model of how in a provider institution the quality process uh, can be established. And uh, it's a model where uh, that builds on the participation and involvement of the whole 
staff members, you know, so it's nothing which is sort of put on top down, um, but which all the um, uh, members, the staff members have to really agree on commonly, you know. So this is the framework. <clears throat> And uh, we had, um, in the process of developing this field testing in 60 um, uh, in, uh, provider institutions and uh, accompanying uh, scientific research. So this is what the project was. And I'll just show, um, I have some of the things on display. This is the German uh, publication. Uh, there are four leaflets and four, four yeah, brochures uh, about the quality standards, about the competence profile, about the quality development framework. And um, then uh, we have also um, the main things in an English publication, which is on the website. We have translated it so that the quality standards and the competence profile are available in English. <coughs> Uh, yeah, and this was something uh, which was sort of um, also the uh, what the ministry wanted us. They said they fund it if we can manage to develop a marketable project, uh, a marketable product of the quality development and quality assurance. So this is why they said they would not fund any further. They fund the development, but they don't fund the implementation because they said after the end of the development, it should be a marketable project. Well, I hope one day <laughs> we'll reach that. <laughs> um, so uh, what we really need now and we're still working on is achieving a self-commitment of practitioners, of providers, of policymakers, of all those responsible for career guidance in our country, uh, that they promote and adhere to these common, commonly agreed uh, standards. What we were not heading for, just to be clear about that, is that uh, we uh, did not want to establish a law or legislation for quality assurance due to the federalistic constitution in Germany, so this would not be realistic. Although, of course, we would dream about this to have a law and legislation on, on, on binding standards, but it would not be a realistic expectation, so we were not heading for that. And uh, we were also not heading for a big Q certificate or a, certif a certification procedure. And uh, this, uh, no, whatever. And this has uh, the reason because in the German professional community, um, the certification is a crucial and very controversial issue uh, among the professionals, providers, and policy makers. Many of them have their own certification process. So we have many of them. So they would fear a competition if we have another one. And it would not be having, it would not be used to have, in addition to all those already existing, having another one, unless it is acknowledged as something which is sort of overarching, you know, and uh, covering all the others. So what we did not do, what we did do is uh, <clears throat> Sort of establishing just recently a BQ label, and this is a little leaflet, but oops, sorry, only in German, uh, which says the condition under which they can um, get our logo, which is this one here, um, and put it on their website or on their on their um, publications if they adhere to the standards we have. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we don't have to go into detail to this, but of course we have sort of a scientific background of uh, this BQ concept and the standards and the um, competences, uh, which is a little bit different than some other frameworks are. So we have a systemic approach from systemic theory saying that uh, uh, career guidance is nothing which is isolated, which uh, happens isolated, uh, but is embedded in uh, uh, several systems and counselings and, 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 and contexts like the client system, the practitioner system, their biography, their experiences, their social surroundings, their social environment. This influences the practitioner, this influences the clients. The counselling system, the process as such is a system 
and uh, then we have the organization where it is embedded in, and of course, the societal context. And these 19 quality standards and the 17 competencies are always attached to one of those systems. So this is the um, system uh, and the uh, approach which lies underneath this. You don't have to look at this now. This is sort of the groups. We have transversal quality standards and competences which are not uh, attached to one of those systems. Then we have uh, the process-oriented quality standards and competences. We have the organizational quality standards and competences because um, practitioners as well as the service providers, they have to at least uh, follow um, and, and be able to, to, um, to manage with organizational uh, issues. And of course the societal context and societal goals. And the competence, uh, competences and professionalism. These are the types of, of uh, um, um, quality standards and competences. So, what is our message? I just said this. Um, we have these different systems, and uh, as a consequence, and this is again very crucial and important, is that quality is not only the responsibility of the councillors as such. Sometimes, you know, sort of councillors and practitioners uh, sort of feel the burden that everything is put on them and say, you are responsible for, for quality and guidance. It is likewise the uh, managers and the management of the provider organization who has to provide the uh, uh, institutional framework and the rules uh, uh, in that organization and also the policy makers. So each of these three and our um, quality standards, um, they um, in the, the criteria and the indicators we, we uh, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, established there, they address the councillors, they address the management of the provider organization, and they address the uh, uh, policy makers. So I have later on an um, example, if we still have time, you can have a look at it, but you can also have a look at the, um, uh, at the English uh, brochure where this is written in. So we have always these three levels of uh, responsibilities. <laughs> okay, this is what I just said. Okay, these are just a picture of the project. The English version is that. You can get it later. It's available at our, at our uh, website. And uh, now to come to the end, what are the lessons learned we had, we, we, we learned? Strong professional associations are crucial for successfully developing and launching quality standards and guidelines. In Germany, we do not really have very strong professional uh, um, associations. Other countries, like France, for instance, they do really have, and they push it, you know, and so there is a power in such. Um, and I remember in the ELGPN uh, quality uh, picture, there was one of the indicators for, um, for, for uh, practitioner competences was belonging to a professional organization which in Germany everybody would laugh at, you know, but in France, it's very, it's very important. So this is a difference between countries. Um, uh, professional associations may be reluctant in agreeing on a, on a common certificate or a certification process. I said this before because they are running their own and uh, there is competition among them. Um, a long-lasting breath is necessary to really do it. The project funding was five years, and now we are still in our fourth year in sort of disseminating and uh, establishing it in practice. So it's really a uh, um, long-lasting breath, which is the breath which is needed. Crucial is the involvement of all stakeholders in the whole press process, this is really crucial uh, to be successful. Public funding is inevitable, at least for the development phase, but as we experience in Germany, it is also crucial and very important for the initial, at least for the initial implementation phase. You would not get a real sort of a good start uh, if you don't have at least initially a funding <coughs> in the implementation. And um, 
Well, uh, we experienced that the governments, they were very enthusiastic in the beginning about funding this project, but then in the, in the end to say, well, this is, a, a, pros, uh, this is a, a, a quality concept which we funded and which we at least recommend to guidance providers and organizations to follow it. They even would not do this because they fear of uh, intervening uh, in the market. You know, so this is then the end of the story. Then uh, maybe in other countries it's different, but in Germany they say, no, we interfere in the market, we cannot do that. So they would not recommend it, which we think is a bad thing on, because they, they funded for five years and they invested in it. Anyway, <clears throat> implementation is much more difficult than development and needs strong partners, private and public. And this is the end of my story. Thank you very much. I hope you got it and uh, I'm open for questions. Thank you very much.